All right, so I'm just going to do a couple more examples here about discontinuities uh, and domain and holes and asymptotes. Um, yeah, just a reminder again that, that the difference between hole and asymptote is if it cancels out up top, then it makes a hole. If there's no match to cancel out up top, then it makes a vertical asymptote. Okay, so another example for you here. Again, our long-term picture is to want to make the graph, right? I was starting to sketch the graph on this one. For now, we're not really going to make them, but we just want to talk about the, the breaks in the graph, right? So uh, again, pause the video and try this one before continuing. All right, so basically, um, we know that uh, the domain will be all real numbers except when this denominator is zero. Okay, so if we set that thing to zero and solve it, we get x equals negative two. So our domain is all real numbers except x equal negative two. Okay, and uh, that is our point of dot discontinuity, x equals negative two. And then to determine if it's a whole or a vertical asymptote, I wanna check if there's a matching factor in the numerator. This means we will have to factor. Right, the denominator is, is pretty basic, it's just x plus 2, but the numerator, I want to see this thing, this trinomial, will likely factor into two little binomials. Okay, so we're going to use x and x here for the x squared, and then it has to multiply up to 4 and add up to 4. Okay, so I think if we do plus 2 and plus 2, that should work. Okay, and the point of that was to see, oh, now, now there is a matching factor, in fact, there's two of them, but I just need one to cancel out. Okay, so my, my point at negative 2, right, that is going to be a whole because it cancels out. Okay, so when we graph, right, basically when we graph, we know that x equals negative 2, there's going to be a hole in the graph. Okay, so in fact, I think this one um, end, ends up being a linear equation, believe it or not. And so the graph will look like this, something like that. And then at negative 2, we draw a hole on the graph. That, and that's it. And it, it won't always be on the x-axis like this. This one's kind of a bummer that that turned out that way. But if my graph was like, say, up here, and there's a hole at negative 2, I would just trace up to where the graph is at negative 2 and draw a hole right there. All right. So the hole is in the graph. It's a break or a discontinuity in the graph, which is really what this lesson's about. All right. One final twist is to, to with these rational expressions, I want to do a real-life question because I get asked a lot where you use this stuff. And I think this is actually a really good example of um, where you might use something like this. Okay, and, and a lot of kids just kind of solve this mentally, which is fine, but as the numbers get more complex, it would be kind of kind of tricky. So I'm gonna give you a chance to just kind of try this. Uh, you're a basketball player and you've made 18 out of 30, first 30 free throws, that's 60%. And say you have a goal to get to like 70%, so like how many would you have to make in a row, like consecutive makes in order to get up to 70%? And it's actually, usually this is more than you'd think. It's only a 10% jump, but you got to make a bunch more free throws. So you can kind of try to do it mentally, uh, and then I'll go over the specific math. So pause the video. Okay, so currently we have 18 out of 30, 18 makes out of 30 total, and that equals 60%. Okay, so the thing is, we are going to have these, this is our makes on top and our total on the bottom and we're going to let x represent the consecutive makes because we want to know how many consecutive makes it'll be so i'm going to make that my variable right how many consecutive makes we need to get to 70 percent so basically if i make x more shots then my total makes would be 18 plus x more makes okay but that would also change my total shots because I wouldn't have had 30 total shots anymore. I'd have 30 plus X more shots. Okay, so basically I want this little setup to equal 70%. Right, so this is my equation with X that I would like to solve. Right? And you might think the X is canceled here, but not the way it works. Not with the 18 and the 30 being there. So to solve this, this is a little bit tricky algebra, but... Um, this fraction bar is divide, so I'm going to actually multiply both sides by 30 plus x. 30 plus x on both sides, and then it'll cancel out here, so I'll have 18 plus x on this side. 
you just wiped out the denominator there, right? This multiply cancels with that divide, so we did have 18 plus x. On the other side, I'm going to distribute the 0.7, so that would be 21 plus 0.7x. Okay, and now since there's x's on both sides, I'm going to minus 7 tenths x from the 1x. So this side is now 18, uh, shoot, 1x minus 0.7x is 0.3x. Okay, and on this side, we just have the 21. And now we're getting pretty close to being down here. Uh, minus 18, so we'll get 3. And then divide both sides by 3 tenths, and you'll get 10. So you'll need to make 10 consecutive free throws to get to 70%. Okay, and we can sort of test it if we're not sure. We can go back here and say, okay, if x were 10, I'd have 28 total makes and 40 total free throws. And if you divide those out, that should give us 70%. Okay, so that's actually surprising. You have to make 10 more in a row just to get up 10 10% so kind of tricky but uh, I thought that was a cool example of where you might use this um, and I think these might show up on a tester quiz so I want to make sure to include them here in the lesson all right that's it thank you for watching